Everyone and welcome to the channel hot mama travel today we have a spooky adventure for you today we are going to go see a victorian memoriam the art of victorian mourning here at the howell waffle house built in 1889 they are putting on an exhibit to show all of the ritual that went in during the victorian era um, in the process of mourning and there's a lot of interesting facts that i'm going to share with you today so let's go inside and let's experience a victorian memorial by the first female doctor in Orange County. She actually delivered over a thousand babies in this home and carriage house. Incredible history. So I wanna share with you some interesting and slightly morbid aspects to the art of Victorian mourning. Mourning looked different for men versus women. For example, men were only required to mourn for three months and wear a black hat band or armband, while women had a mourning period of two and a half years, deep mourning, full mourning, and half mourning. And they were required to wear heavy, fully covered black crepe dresses and weeping veils. The horrific thing was that the dresses and veils were toxic, thanks to the dyes and chemicals used to process the fabric leading to irritation, blindness, respiratory issues, and even death. So ironically, while they were mourning their dead loved ones, they were slowly killing themselves. Later into the mourning process, women were able to incorporate some colors like gray, dark blue, and lavender. Victorian mourning didn't just dictate what you wore, but also the stationery you used. For example, the dark color and black border served a couple purposes. It notified the mail carrier of its somber importance and to be careful while in transit. It also notified the recipient to make sure they had privacy before reading its contents. Victorian mourning accessories included engraved black jet jewelry, lockets containing the photo and lock of hair of the deceased loved one, and jewelry made from the deceased loved one's hair. These hair art pieces could be quite intricate, like this box containing hair from multiple loved ones, building on family member by family member to make a work of art that lasts forever. Victorian grave dolls were used on display during the child's wake and then placed on the grave after the burial. Post-mortem photography was also very popular. As morbid as it sounds, it played a very important role in the Victorian mourning process because of poisonous Victorian homes, disease, lack of vaccines, and high infant mortality rates. Many family members just simply did not have the time to capture their loved ones before they died, and this was a way to capture their likeliness forever. As you can see, it was also popular to prop their loved ones up as if they were alive to take maybe the very first and very last family photo. I'll be honest with you guys, this portion of the exhibit was definitely heavy. As a mama of four beautiful babies, I got quite emotional. Definitely felt for the Victorian families that had to endure this pain. It made me understand why the ritual of Victorian mourning was so important and elaborate. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, experiencing the Victorian Memoriam here at the Howell Waffle House. If you did, give the video a like, hit the subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe and never miss another minute of the fun. And of course, we offer detailed destination guides and travel tips over at our blog, hotmamatravel.com to make your next family adventure hot.